We'd like to start by acknowledging and paying our respect to the traditional custodians of the land that we meet today, the Turbul and Jagra people, and pay our respects to Elders past, present and future. So when we first got the brief, not only, I guess, did we have to kind of deconstruct what the brief was about, but um, we, uh, our team ultimately decided, uh, determined who was the best person to implement the nudge and what was the most effective way to do so. So we came up with two really good initiatives. The first, we decided to um, maybe look at, uh, maybe look at uh, looking at uh, targeting the arresting officer. And the reason why we thought this was a really good initiative is because the arresting officer plays a pivotal role at that pre-charge stage and could potentially play a role at stopping the matters progressing to a much more timely and court, court um, expensive um, process. The second, uh, the second process and the one that we decided to go with was to look at criminal defence solicitors. And the reason why we thought this was a really good idea because criminal defence solicitors play a pivotal role at every court of the criminal, at every process during the criminal justice system um, to have an opportunity to refer the matters on to ARJC. So for example, at the pre-charge pre stage, if a defendant or an accused comes in and they request representation, then it's a perfect opportunity to liaise with the arresting officer and to encourage or nudge ARJC referrals. Or at the diversionary stage, you've, I guess you've already been told that the majority of referrals are through police prosecutions and that um, it's done at the request of the, the criminal defence solicitor. And there's also opportunities at both the pre-sentencing and post-sentencing stage as well. Um, so the way, the two-pronged approach that we decided to take was to send out a letter, so at identified um, regions and send out a letter and put in a nudge in that particular letter. And then during, uh, and at the bottom of the letter, send a link to some training programs where there's a series of nudges in that particular webinar. But to talk a little bit more about these initiatives, I'll pass on to Steph. Thanks, Luke. So. <laughs> cool. So uh, as Luke said, we're taking a two-pronged approach. So the first one is a letter that has a peer comparison, um, which has obviously been used before in different circumstances to try and affect behaviour. So um, how we would do that would be to firstly identify two underperforming regions in terms of low referrals to the ARJC system. Um, the reason we chose two is just because there's such a small sample of referrals to begin with, one felt a bit too low. Um, once we've got those, we're going to liaise with the Queensland Law Society or QLS to identify practitioners that are registered in that area that we can actually target. Now, we will be looking for all practitioners registered. Obviously, this will encompass solicitors that aren't necessarily working in a criminal space, um, but we figured it's still a positive to perhaps send that letter, and even if it doesn't relate to their practice, it'll still open conversations within the profession. Then the letter would be sent out with practising certificate renewals. So they happen every year about the same time. And mostly it's done by email. So it would be an email with information or if they requested a hard copy, they get a hard copy covering letter as well. Um, next slide, please. So this is an example of how the letter could look. So hi, Luke, thanks for renewing your practising certificate. It's also attached. And then this is our nudge. So something along the lines of, did you know, for example, CANS only referred, say, 4% of all total cases that went to ARJC in the state. So we really want to let them know the social norm is more and you're not doing it. We've also got some information underneath, that lets them know why this is so great. Um, obviously keeping the positive framing, so say 98% um, agreement rates rather than only a 2% failure to agree. And then down the bottom is what links us to our second initiative, the webinar. So the webinar is going to be run again through QLS, the best way to get through to our practitioners, uh, through their MyQLS system, which keeps track of what are known as continuing professional development points. Every year, solicitors have to maintain 10 points to renew for the next year. And this webinar is going to be free, major incentive, because they usually cost a couple hundred bucks each, and it's worth one point. So there in itself is your first incentive. The webinar will aim to be educational and um, also include our nudges in terms of that positive framing, statistics, letting them know how everyone else is doing, but also really running through 
breaking down preconceived notions um, of issues like, you know, that's a soft avenue to take or it's too long and it, there's no real benefit. So we really want to run down and make sure everyone's aware and also aware of the actual benefits that it brings. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, that will be in cohorts with QLS. And so I will run us through a bit more of the behavioural science. Hi, so as Steph and Luke have already go, gone over, our program is deeply rooted in behavioural science principles. Firstly, our letter uses peer comparison to nudge the behaviour of defence solicitors. As we've seen in other initiatives such as Nudge versus Superdrug, peer comparison feedback encourages people to do what most other people are doing. In this case, by showing defence solicitors how they compare to their peers, they will be motivated to change their behaviour to what is deemed as normal for their group. So by sending letters to solicitors in two areas where we've identified have poor referral rates um, they, and comparing them to areas with high rates and the state as a whole, um, we hope to encourage them to want to join that group and fit in. Secondly, our webinar will exist to educate practitioners on the ARJC system and break down preconceived notions and social norms. The language in the webinar will be framed in a positive way that primes the mindset of defence solicitors to modify their behaviours. As Steph was saying, 98% success as opposed to 2% fail. Overall, throughout the letter and the webinar, the language and content will be, um, will be simple um, and framed um, for effectiveness, making it easier for solicitors to understand the information and, and know how to take action. Next slide, please. So there's a few key reasons why our proposal will increase referral rates. Firstly, defence solicitors have a lot of access at key points in the process and they get to spend a lot of time with the offender to identify their suitability. Next, there are a lot of incentives to complete the online module. It's free, online, easily accessible and counts towards a point. Uh, and once they're in, we'll have lots of language framing, um, framing language and simple language and calls to action to encourage them to refer more as well. And finally, um, through our whole program, it'll, it'll work to increase awareness and break down the norms, um, further incentivising referral rates. So to evaluate, we'll do a longitudinal study over 24 months, collecting rates of referral and webinar completion every six months in waves, um, and be able to compare this to referral rates to know, uh, to kind of delve into causality. If this evaluation deems the initiative successful, then this can be rolled out statewide. Uh, any questions? Thank you.